the board met today to talk about the new jail and, and kind of give people an overview of what was decided and what, what it looks like moving forward. Sure. All right, so the challenge that, that we have had with this uh, planning process is the, the drastic increase in construction cost. You know, construction cost is, is at an all-time high right now. Slowly we're starting to see a reduction. But, uh, you know, when we went forward and, and, and got a bond to build this new project, um, you know, we were shooting for about a 700-bed facility-ish. And, and, and the goal with that is, is hey, we're not going to fill it up the day we open. And we don't want to. We want the ability to, to you know, expand a pod and things like that for the future, or pods um, for additional housing here within our existing footprint, uh, doing what was not done before, and that is planning ahead. Um, so the challenge that we're facing right now is the you know the bond amount that we that we uh, secured for this uh, particular project, and what the construction overall construction uh, costs are currently. Um, you know we're just going to fall short of that goal. So you know what we've done is we've sat down and we've looked at uh, work with Mosley Architects, which is our architectural firm that that was awarded this contract. They're, they're great uh, staff to deal with because they're, they're very creative. They've, the, you know, our, our problems are not unique to, to them or to, this, uh, or, or to this particular industry. You know, trying to get as much as you can with as little money as you have to spend certainly is something they're used to. So, um, you know, they do know the, all the state minimum standards, the federal standards. Um, so when getting into the design phase uh, of the project, uh, you know, looking at opportunities where, hey, you know, we, you know, these are some areas we might could cut or identify as alternatives to try and get as close to that budget as we can. The reality is, is for our current budget, we're looking at about a 430 bed facility. Um, where that becomes a problem for us right now is, is uh, if if I was to, to complete that project tomorrow, I, I'm at full capacity moving into a brand new facility. Um, and, and, you know, while that's a, a nicer, newer facility, certainly a safer environment to house people, at the end of the day, we're still overcrowded, um, and, and that was our goal with this uh, for our design. Uh, so, moving forward, you know, we've identified, uh, you know, a good number being a 600-bed facility. 608 actually is what this current project looks like. Um, you know, it's around a 72 million dollar at today's current construction rates uh, per square foot. Um, we we do anticipate and hope that it drops significant more before we get to the construction phase, and we believe it will a little bit. Um, but one of the challenges that we have is trying to identify a way for us to purchase that additional square footage without having to go to the taxpayers. Um, so I was challenged with uh, the you know with going to looking at you know various revenue streams and things like that. Uh, you know that that could come through through a per diem rate. Um, you know, housing federal inmates is is uh, Anderson City currently does it. Uh, some other facilities throughout the state do. Um, it, it's you know their incarcerate pre-trial incarceration rate has increased, and they're they're forecasting an additional increase for the future. Um, you know, so having a pod after I've had conversations with the folks at U.S. Marshal Service. Um, having a pod that we could designate as a as a federal dorm, um, we f we feel pretty certain that, that we could easily accommodate up to 48 or more if if the if the need was greater, um, and work with those guys in providing a, a location to house, which is really convenient for them because the challenge is there's only a few facilities in upstate that will house federal inmates. Um, the, the you know the need plus the the uh, uh, the resources locally to them um, is an exceeded. So this is actually a good opportunity for them as well. Um, so that's a revenue stream. Another challenge we have is juvenile housing. Currently, all juveniles are housed in Columbia when they're when they're placed in custody uh, by the court and to remain in custody. Um, that challenge is it takes two officers because of juveniles to transport that individual to Columbia. For us, that's an hour and a half trip each way. Um, probably an hour and a half while you're down there in the booking process and getting them booked in or back, booked back in, however that might look. Um, and, and that's wear and tear. That's about a full day of nothing but a transport. Um, and the challenge that we have is that's not just a one-shot deal. Every time they have a hearing, you have to go back down there, bring them back, and take them back if the, if the court chooses to keep them incarcerated. Um, we are seeing a, a pretty significant increase in juvenile crimes and violent offenses being being uh, committed by juveniles. Um, 
if that trend continues, we have to be in a, in, in a position to be able to, to physically and financially house them. Um, currently, we do not in Anderson. Um, Greenville County has a juvenile facility, small, uh, small facility that they've got. The, their challenges are, you know, have been trying to staff their main jail and they've had to shut that down. So even in the upstate, there's just not a resource available for that. You know, speaking with some of our neighboring jurisdictions and some of our municipalities, if they had to house a juvenile per court order or something like that, it, it, it'd be very challenging for them to do so monetarily, uh, you know, packing somebody up and running them to Columbia with two officers and going back and forth. If you take a small municipality like, say, a, a, a West Pels or, or an IVA, that takes the entire staff for that day out of play. And that's just that's significant. Um, so the ability to be able to run here to Anderson, uh, book them in and, and, and return back to, to service is, is, is significant. Um, the per diem rate would be very similar. However, the overall expenditures that they would incur in, in, in reduction in manpower while that takes place is what we would hope to save them. And you, you got with the architect and redesigned it to save some money and, yes, and, and, and allow for some growth. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so, you know, again, one of the challenges was, was uh, you know, our initial layout was two wings, and each wing held six pods. Um, so what we, what we kind of figured out is this, uh, a, a couple things. You know, that's more concrete for foundation. That's taking up more real estate. When you take up more real estate like that, um, you know, you have to do a lot more civil engineering, a lot more moving of earth, probably putting in more uh, infrastructure for drain pipes. You know, we we're looking at, with that particular design, adding one, if not two, 42 inch in diameter drainage pipes to, to adequately carry away. And, you know, when you, when you think of a pipe, that's no big deal because our roads and bridges guys, they do that all the time. But when you think of the run of that pipe and the length of, of you know, uh, it, it's significant. So just looking at flipping one, one wing on top of the other and going vertical um, meant a, a couple of different things. It meant that, uh, you know, we would not be encroaching on that additional need for real estate. Um, we could reduce the need for some of that infrastructure uh, demand that we would have had had we, had we spread it out. But also, more importantly, we're going to put one foundation and one roof instead of a, a, a wide foundation with a very wide roof. And you could stack infrastructure so your runs are shorter. So, you know, in the long run, that was a significant savings. Uh, we looked at about a, uh, about a million dollar savings to a million and a half dollar savings just in, in construction with design by doing that but also a two and a half million dollar savings in some civil with redu reduction of the need to make these 42 inch pipelines. So, you know, we're looking at about a $5 million savings by stacking and going vertical. So, you know, that, that made the most sense. So that's the current design. And it allows for at. growth. Oh, absolutely. It gives yes, you sir. room, more room for growth, right? We, we do. And that's one of the things we took in consideration is, you know, if we go to the 608 bed, we go vertical, we shrink the, the footprint, the overall footprint within the, the lot that it's going to be on. Um, it was important for us to also think about what's it going to look like if we ever have to surpass 608. And we're, again, we're trying to plan ahead for these next generations so we, we don't get in a position to where we're overcrowded again, where it's a safe, a, a, an unsafe environment for people to, to, to be housed or people to work in. And, um, and in doing so, uh, you know, looking at future growth and expansion. So this design, we've actually identified a location where we could do a separate wing, add on, the infrastructure will be in place to, to, to you know, pour the pad, tie into the existing, um, you know, uh, utilities and infrastructure and, and, and flow it into that new area. Um, you know, a, a wing is two pods, each pod's 48, so that's 96 beds. So if we do a, a you know, if we expand and, and, and stay consistent with what this current building's gonna look like and go vertical uh, with, you know, another wing plus a second tier uh, or second floor, um, you're looking at another 200 bit. So, you know, now you're at 808. Uh, and, and, you know, for future growth, that's very important. You know, it's important that, that we meet our current needs and demands and to do so safely um, and, and adequately um, for, for our staff, for those being, you know, being held and in our care. You know, we got to remember at the end of the day, every, you know, most of our population are unsentenced people that have not been found guilty. We have very, you know, very 
small portion of our population are sentenced inmates where they've already been adjudicated, adjudicated in, in court. So. You mentioned too that uh, the working together with the mental health court, yes, sir. there may be space just for patients that are people who are there that are suffering from mental health issues. Sure. So the challenge that we have is we have a facility right now that's rated for about 240. At any given day, I could have 400 to 440. <laughs> I mean, that's, you know, almost double that that capacity. And the challenge is 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 just putting bodies in square footage. You know, not to mention the challenges with classification. You know, if if you know if I got an individual that's in for a violent crime, I need to have him in an area that's only for violent offenders. It's as important for me to protect the inmates that are within that facility as it is adequate housing and finding bed space for. Um, you know, I can't mix sentenced and unsentenced inmates together. I can't mix, you know, certain crimes together. And then, you know, another challenge is, is, you know, you have a rival gang members. You have, uh, you know, co-defendants that both committed the same crime. Or you could have a victim of a prior crime. You know, we have to think about those things when we do classification. Um, you know, and it's a challenge when you've got too many people for a small facility. The facility like what we're looking at now, we've got so many different options when we look at it based on classification. Um, as you mentioned, the mental health, you know, one of the challenges that we currently have in that facility with, you know, being a 250 bed facility with a, you know, 240 bed facility with 400 plus inmates is I can't isolate people with serious mental health issues. And, and you know, when I say isolate, I don't like them being mixed with general population. It's it's not a safe environment for them to be. It's it's not an adequate place for them to be to be to be appropriately monitored by medical and assessed and and treated and things like that. So the goal would be to get you know to to identify those individuals. Uh, you know, uh, assign a pod specific for for that need, um, and have it in close proximity for our medical facility to you know to to be able to properly and adequately monitor those individuals. So it's a difficult task when they're mixed with general population. So with the board approving this to move ahead and council, if they move ahead, how quickly realistically could the 608 bed facility be up and running? So we're, we're, we're in, in at the final design phase, I guess you could say, you know, the, the, we've looked at, we've tweaked, we've done so many different renderings of this, of this jail, um, you know, and it's so exciting because I can see you know what each one of those has looked like and 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 what it's going to look like for the future and for the growth and the need um so yeah so so time frame wise once we now that we've got the, the blessing to go with the 608 uh in, in the planning portion is as we will move forward with the architect and look at uh you know taking this current design and getting more uh, detailed in it. Uh, you know, right now it's just, the, it's, it's, the, it's the, the, the shell of the design. Um, so we can start really rolling up our sleeves and, and, and bringing that particular thing to life. Um, you know, uh, we're looking at probably sometime around this fall building it out for construction. Um, you know, so, you know, putting it out to bid, RFP, RFQ looks like, you know, let's say this fall, potentially awarded around winter time or first of the year. And you know, just depending on the, the market um, and, and and things like that. But I think, realistically speaking, we will see construction going on uh, of this new facility sometime by around first of mid year. And that's so exciting because that's not that's not far, that's not long from now. In fact, if you ride by now, what used to be the armory is now is now a vacant lot. And and so you know that shows us that uh, you know this this council and this committee has taken this project very serious and and you know and we we appreciate it more than they could know the need uh, nobody knows that need greater than the ones that live in there and, and work in there every day and and i can assure you with the need's been there for a long time and we appreciate them moving forward with it